Today we're going to be talking about different medical diagnostic tests that are going to help us to diagnose our patients. So what sort of things can we ask for um, to help narrow down our diagnoses? So what I want you to think about first is um, what type of tests you have heard of. So what diagnostic tools can medical professionals use to help diagnose a patient? What do you think? So first one we're going to talk about is x-rays. I'm sure plenty of you have gotten x-rays. I've gotten my fair share for sure. And those are used to detect injury or disease of the skeletal system and some diseases in the soft tissue. But mostly it's the hard tissues we're looking at here. Um, bones usually. So here's some examples of x-rays. One example of a soft tissue test that you could do is um, in the GI tract. If you do a barium test, so the person drinks like a little smoothie with barium in it, and the barium shows up on the x-ray, so we can look and see if there's any kind of clog in the intestines or something like that. We're looking um, for the contrast. Um, um, another test that is a little more precise and helps us look at soft tissues in more detail is the MRI. Okay, so we can see here we've got a nice brain scan where if we did this with an x-ray, we would probably just see the bones of the skull, the bone, the vertebrae of the neck. You can even see the tongue here, um, the nasal cavity, the nose, the flesh. Um, so that gives us a lot more detail. And if anyone's ever got one, you have to lay really still, go through this uh, big giant machine. Doesn't hurt, but sometimes it's loud and people get claustrophobic. Um, another similar test is a CT scan or computed tomography. So this also uses x-rays to produce a 2D image of the structures in a thin section of the body, right? So this would be a cross section, a transverse section of the abdomen. So usually CT scans are used for abdominal, if we're looking at the chest or different organs of the abdomen, the kidneys, or the intestines, liver, spleen, those kind of things. Um, so this is good with detecting soft tissues, kind of like the MRI. Okay, but one important thing about these three, so x-rays, MRIs, and CT scans, um, these all use radiation, right? X-rays, radiation. So there is some risk involved because radiation, if it's done a lot, can cause damage to DNA during DNA um, reproduction and um, could potentially cause damage down the road and cause thing, mutations like cancer. So it does put someone at higher risk. So we want to be careful when we're doing these tests to only get the part of the body tested that we're looking to diagnose, right? We don't want to expose the whole body and all of the organs to radiation, particularly with the reproductive organs. And we also wouldn't want to use these in someone who's pregnant unless it's a dire emergency um, because that could affect the baby, right? A baby's cells are undergoing mitosis very frequently, right? They're dividing and growing a lot. So they're, are, they're at a higher risk for getting um, those mutations from the cell. We also would want to limit this for if someone, let's say someone has some kind of disease where they would need a test to look at a particular organ. Maybe we're looking at the kidneys. They have some kind of kidney disease and we want to look at the kidney every couple months for the rest of their life. Um, we, we may want to try something with no radiation. So a good option here is ultrasound. So an ultrasound uses high frequency sound waves, so not radiation, to create an image. So there's no radiation exposure to the patient, no harm to the patient. That's why this is used a lot with um, developing fetuses and pregnant women to check on the health of the fetus. You can also use these for organs um, in the abdomen. Um, people get um, ultrasounds of their ovaries, of their kidneys. Um, of their heart even, so you can see in real time the valves opening and closing if there's a valve issue that you want to look at. So lots of different things we can do with ultrasounds. 
Okay, so now if we want to actually look inside someone's digestive tract, right, someone has a digestive issue. If it's an upper digestive issue, so if we're looking at the stomach or um, the small intestine, we can do an endoscopy. I think endo kind of sounds like into, right? so we're going into the mouth. So it's a long tube with a camera, so they would put you under some light anesthetics and um, put this long tube camera into your stomach where they can move it around and, and take pictures and see video of what's inside your stomach. So maybe if you have an ulcer, um, if a child has swallowed something that we want to look for, if they're looking at the sphincter between the intestines and the stomach, whatever it is they might be looking for, um, you can use this to look at the upper GI. So you would, this would be a normal view of the duodenum is that beginning part of the small intestine, um, pre-pyloric stomach. So this is just kind of the end of the stomach before the sphincter. So this would be healthy, normal looking tissue. It should be pink, it should be shiny and mucousy. If it's super red, if it's bleeding, that would probably indicate that something's not quite right. Colonoscopy is the same idea, but we're going in the other end. So this is a camera that takes pictures of the large intestine. Patient is asleep for this procedure. They take um, a drink the night before that empties out their colon. So it makes you go to the bathroom all night long so that the colon is nice and clean and they can get some good pictures. So the camera goes up and we can look all around. So if someone is um, having blood in their stool, um, if they're having a lot of pain in their abdomen, we can't figure out why. Um, if we suspect colon cancer, these are things we can be looking at. Colonoscopy is something that people use to detect colon cancer too. After like, I think it's age 50, people start getting these regularly um, just to check for polyps. So a polyp is like a little kind of lump that protrudes out and what they would do is they would take a sample do a test and see if that sample is cancerous or not. Because something like colon cancer um, doesn't really have symptoms usually until it's really bad. So by getting a simple colonoscopy is a great way to catch something early so that you can treat it early without before it becomes a big problem. All right, so now let's see if you can use your notes to answer these practice problems. <laughs>